Africa 55, presenting authentic insights and commentary on African matters. Your host is Maureen Wangati Nagbo, evaluation expert, founder and CEO of the A55, Karibuni. <laughs> After several failed attempts to say hello, I hope this one is going to go well. Uh, I hope you're well, Africa 55. This is Maureen Wangati, the founder of, uh, co-founder of the Africa 55 group. And I just wanted to say hello to you and to let you know that we are still remembering our commitments on the channel towards you and hope that you are going to be still enjoying uh, chatting with us and listening to us. Today, I come before you with a question. What have you been thinking over this period that we've had lockdowns and curfews? Is your country still under lockdown and under a curfew or not? Have you taken the opportunity to reflect and to think about why it is that we've had this chance in the world for the world to stop and for us to have um, an opportunity to sit down and uh, relax from our normal activities and to think? I think uh, generally I've been thinking about this quite a bit and wondering why is it that the world suddenly stopped? Why is it that the things that used to give me joy before, the things that we used to enjoy and do without a thought, have now become so difficult? I think it's probably because after a certain amount of time of doing the same thing over and over again and achieving the same results, I think already we were heading to not a very good place. If you look at the world economically, the economy, the world economy was already in trouble, in big trouble. We know that the banks were in big trouble. There's a big debt burden on many countries globally, and it's not just African countries. But, and we also saw that the poverty levels were going up, despite the fact that Africans were working very hard, still we were not able to afford the basic necessities and the things of life. In Western nations, many people had become very indebted. Homelessness levels had risen exponentially. And um, basically, the quality of life and ability to afford even a meal on the table was no longer a guarantee. Meanwhile, the political class was also experiencing quite a few upheavals globally. Um, we know that there's uh, the issue of the Trump administration and the fact that many do not agree with its you know, policies, etc. And we also know that we also have in the UK, there's also the UK administration with Boris Johnson and Brexit, where the UK was going to exit the European Union. The European Union was not too happy about this, and um, because there was going to be a huge loss of income towards the European Union. In Africa, on the other hand, we have countries that were also trying to exit the money markets created by France. Francophone countries were trying to uh, rescue their CFA, of which 500 billion was being uh, sent into the uh, European bank, into the French bank, central bank. And Africans in Central Af in, in um, Africans from Francophone countries were being denied a li their livelihoods because of all this money that they had to remit back to France. And France had to find a way of returning the money or changing the contract so to keep its face in the world. So basically, we we would we could see China on the other hand was busy raping Africa. Okay, taking what they don't belong, having terrible contracts with uh, African governments, secretive contracts that we don't even know about. And all of these had an impact on our, on our continent. Um, on the other hand, our education was not necessarily uh, achieving any results for very many people. We have a very high rate of joblessness and lack of, edu uh, lack of, edu of educational opportunities as well as lack of job opportunities for qualified Africans within Africa and without. We also had the problem of migration of a lot of Africans out of Africa into the West. Uh, we lost a lot of lives uh, through you know, the journey and also through racist policies, okay? At the moment, currently, we can see that the racial tensions in the world are at an all-term high. Not that they were not there before, but they've definitely been exposed through some, some of the you know, um, recent events 
including the killing of an unarmed man called George Floyd in the U.S., that triggered it. it. Triggered a lot of riots and triggered a lot of protests in the country. I'll say all of these things to say that we are at a crux in the world where we should take this opportunity to sit and reflect. I remember in class, there was a time um, in high school, when I was going to high school, where we used to have this class where we would just sit down and reflect. We would all be told to go and sit down on a bench and just reflect and think, you know, about whether what our lives are about and, you know, whether, you know, we are achieving objectives, what our plans are for the future, where does... Where do we see ourselves in the next five years, the next 10 years? And during those reflection periods, they were very important for all of us to um, unwind and to kind of like remove ourselves from the situation that has been created uh, by the school system, which doesn't allow individual thinking and planning for one's own desires and goals. During this period, I would like to call on Africans to each take the opportunity to reflect and to think. We have the risk of taking this period as a threat and filling it in with a lot of activities to try to kind of like, you know, minimize the stress on our bodies, yeah? It's a way kind of like a self-defense mechanism and to try to ignore the situation by just filling in our days with too many activities, even things that are not going to bring any sort of positivity to our, you know, families. I'd like to take the opportunity, Africans take the opportunity to actually sit down and reflect, to talk, find time to have conversations, meaningful conversations with one another about the way the world is going and to reflect and see whether the leadership in our continent is actually driving us the right way or not. I think from those conversations, we will gather a lot of, um, what do we say, we'll, we'll gather a lot of courage and knowledge and perhaps you know, identify solutions along the way to address some of the problems that we have been facing as a continent so that by the time that we, the COVID you know, threat is now minimized and the lockdowns have lock, lockdowns are uh, you know eased up in different african countries we are now at a higher level of consciousness and understanding and are not going to be doing business as usual on that note i'd just like to say thank you for listening to me and i hope that you're going to take the time to sit and reflect and not be afraid of having your own company as your company um, not be afraid to delve into some of the hardest questions, even if it means that you have to engage with people online, but make sure that our voice is felt and that we get responses and that we respond to people asking questions and offering solutions to our continent. That is one of the ways of building. And there's a say, I'll leave you with this African saying that's in my language that says, Kwaria Nikohiga, which means to speak is to become intelligent. Okay, I wish you the best, Africa 55, and look forward to more chats with you soon. Bye-bye. Kwaheri asanteni. -bye.